ahead and get started just just because of time and I know everybody have things to do, um, places to be and people to see. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. I was hoping the uh, president was on, uh, Mr. Wallace Bridges, but he's not. I just want to give him an opportunity to be able to speak and, you know, give us any updates that he may know about. So if he comes on, I'll let him do that. Uh, the same for Robert Stearns. Um, if there's anything going on with economic development on his end in regards to the city, uh, maybe he has some insight on some uh, information that he could share with everybody as well. Um, Matt and Martha, I think, I know you told me that you guys don't have anything to share, but uh, just to confirm with the group, are you guys good? Or is there anything you may want to say, uh, Martha? Yeah, just wanted to note, you know, we're excited. We're within the, like probably a week maybe two, most likely a week to sign the final agreement. So that's really exciting. Um, oh, awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then after y'all sign the final agreement, what, and excuse what me, be? it's not the final, it's the first agreement. Oh, okay. <laughs> I spoke there. Okay. So. Okay. I was like, you, you, you were giving, you were getting me excited. I was like, <laughs> I was like uh oh. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yeah I, I got excited too. the first like, of oh. i think there's 16 total so but the yes. first round yeah. it'll be about uh -huh. four or five different agreements um we have some internal city ones already signed but mm -hmm. um in terms of getting things done with um hoke where both parties are really excited to get things signed hopefully next week so there we've just had some backup with the secretary of state getting um some different entities uh filed so but that should hopefully come in so Okay, well, maybe our next meeting that we have next month, maybe you guys have a little bit more information to share with us and glad everything is moving forward. Of course, you know, we are just as excited as you guys are. And in between time, if you, you know, have any questions or concerns for us, you guys always, always reach out to me or the secretary and um, we'll be as helpful as we can. Okay, thanks, Mr. Walker. I appreciate that. No oh, problem. Uh, Mr. Jared is not on here, is he? Mr. Howard, Jerry Howard. No, Jared said uh, he sent a text and said, uh, said he wouldn't be able to make it. Okay. All right. I wanted to get an update on the uh, the June Teeth project. Um, He'll get an update later. Okay. All right, then. Well, we'll wait on that. Um, well, I'll go ahead and... Uh, share some of the things that we done here in the past which uh last week uh for the cleanup at glenwood park uh me and miss miller and um uh, the president and uh i had some my grandson out there and then we had another lady out there we all went out to the glenwood park and uh we picked up trash around the park and uh in an effort to try to at least start getting it clean, which would be, you know, our contribution from our end um, as we continue the process of trying to get the park uh, where it needs to be. I spoke with the lady that Mr. Johnny Lewis uh, introduced me to, along with uh, a lady by the name of Lashonda Davis. Her name is Miss Alexander. She's with, uh, she's a professor over at TCU. And what she's going to be doing also um, is helping us put together a plan because they kind of started, uh, her and her group started doing some work for Glenwood Park. So uh, we're going to work together with some of our findings and some of the things that we're doing. Uh, we are going to work together and go before the board next month and present uh, what we want and, you know, where we're at and how the city can continue to help um, you know, with help approving uh, the park to get it up to, to par. So we're excited about that. We have a proposal in place with some uh, ideals. Uh, we're in the process of getting a uh, petition signed. Uh, we also have the help with a, a neighboring neighborhood association that's helping with the petition as well. So that's going good thus far and we'll continue to move forward and I'll continue to update you guys um, as to where we are. Uh, we're kind of excited about presenting the um, proposal, we just hadn't had a, a chance to because the last two meetings uh, that the Park and Recreation was supposed to have, they end up getting counseled. Um, one of them was due to the weather. I think that's when it was kind of icing up outside. And then the one that they uh, counseled last week, I'm not for sure why they counseled it. 
So we're waiting to uh, go to the one for uh, April, which I guess is not a bad thing because it gave us an opportunity to be able to continue to work together and be able to meet again before that meeting. So that's where we are with uh, Glenwood Park. Yes, Miss Lorraine. You remember one of the observations we had last Saturday was that the, the little stream that runs through there is really going to have to have heavy equipment to clean it up because it's got a lot of debris that we couldn't we couldn't get. Um, right. It's going to be right. a big effort. I do have the, the pictures of that, you know, that big pipe, the drainage pipe. I don't know what that was. I do have a, a picture of that, and that's something that we're going to present to the city. Uh, yeah. I mean, to the park and recreations to figure out what are I, what's the what is what are going to be the steps we have to take to be able to get someone out there to to clean it up. And I'm sending this information to the lady that's uh, Miss Alexandria that's helping us uh, from TCU. Uh, she was able to tap into some uh, other organizations that will uh, put funds into the park and be able to provide hands on also. So I'm going to figure out what that looks like and we maybe set up a appointment. If you would like to attend Miss Lorraine, let me know. Um, mm -hmm. And then that way we can all come together and come up with something collectively. Okay. I, I just want when you go to the park and rec, I mean, that's something they you really ought to put on their radar screen because that that's going to take some cranes or something moving that stuff. And then the infrastructure of the yeah. park is, is in, in bad shape. Yes. OK. So that's where we at on the park. Do anybody have any questions in regards to the park? Everybody's good there. OK. Uh, other than the park in regards to development, uh, nothing is really came up with development. I'm personally, me and my, uh, some people that I'm working with, we're looking to do a development there on Rosedale and Evans. Uh, one of our issues that we were having is the drainage issue where it floods over there by 7-Eleven uh, alongside the, uh, Access road of 7-Eleven, it floods real bad right there. So with that flooding taking place there, it affects everything that's right there on the corner of Evans and Rosedale also uh, according to the city. So I was able to speak with uh, transport, um, not transportation, public uh, public works, uh, drain, uh, drain uh, storm, uh, drain storage department and come to find out that the city does have funds that they can allocate to help our development with uh, the drainage issues. So they have a, a, a partnership program that uh, we can use. So uh, with me being involved in some of these organizations and attending some of these city meetings, I'm finding out there's a lot of money out here that the city has. Uh, and it's just about knocking on the right door or keep uh, poking the bear until you figure out, okay, where can we get some funds at to be able to get some of these projects uh, completed uh, on, our, on our side? Because uh, as everyone knows, the west side of 35 is thriving very well. And uh, they're able to get uh, access not only from private investors, but they also are able to tap into to some of the city funds and city infrastructure money. So I'm thinking for our side, our side, we need to do that, do that as well. So uh, just wanted to put that out there. And I was hoping Mr. Uh, Robert Stearns were on here so he can talk about another fund that the city is creating that will allow for development as well. So um, if, if he comes on, he can kind of touch bases on that a little more. I don't want to go too far into detail because I don't have all the logistics in regards to how it actually is going to work. But I know the funds will be used for the development. And that this particular fund, which is CDIF fund. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going to, yeah. It's going to take the place of the TIF. So TIF 4 is in place for our area. It's really used for near south side. But uh, some of the TIF follows over onto our side as well. But the CDF, CDIF fund will take over the TIF, and you can use those funds as well for development. So uh, once we get a little bit more information about that, I'll share that with the group because 
you guys may know somebody that have land that's right there in our area and our district that you know maybe have money to do development but maybe need a little help in some area so this with this fund is supposed to be used for but again once i get a little bit more information on that i'll be sure to share that with everyone what about the rosedale bridge the oh. yeah the rosedale bridge uh near south side just got a approved for and i'm not for sure if this is the same thing you're talking about uh, Lorraine, yes, but they just got approved for i forget how much money they got but what they're going to do is come and make the entryway over into the near south side uh I, i'm not for sure what the artwork is going to look like but they're going to do something to the front they haven't said what but they got some funds approved so when you pull over into the south side you're going to have this nice i guess painting, mirror, drawing, landscape. They want to make the entryway of the gateway over into the near south side look nice. So it's going to be there at 30, right there at Rosedale and the bridge. 35. And it's also, yes. And it's also going to be over where they put the, um, I think it's, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's Houston Street. It's a bridge that leads from downtown over into the near south side. They're going to do the same thing there. They're going to clean it up because I think a lot of people walk through there and maybe, you know, they the homeless have kind That's of used the main, it. The main thing, is it the bridge down by the post office or the one that's... I think it's the one by the post office. Okay, well, that's Hempel. Yeah, okay, it's Hempel. So they're going to do the same thing there. They haven't shared yet exactly what it's going to look like, but... Um, it's supposed to look nice so it could be the gateway into near south side. So I've also been talking to Chris Nettles uh, to see, you know, how can we get funds also to have a nice gateway into the south side, period. Because when you're exiting off of 287 onto Rosedale, you have to turn into the south side. And that area there where that bridge is at, I think the city can do some type of landscaping where it looks nice. Uh, I don't know if they can do flowers. I, I don't know, but I know it has to be maintained too. So I haven't been able to meet with him again, but uh, I'm working on trying to figure out, you know, what can be done uh, so that we can have a nice introduction into the South side and also um, introduction into uh, the historic South side, because our gateways into our community could be cleaned up as well, especially with the bridge right there off of, uh, I think it's uh, coming over there from uh, Lancaster. You got to yeah. come up under the bridge. Yeah. Right yeah, there, it's, yeah. it's a that's, mess. That's, it's a mess. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, what is that? That's not- uh, Pine Street. Are well. you talking about Pine or I Am yes. Carol? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's right Pine. there. It's, yeah. That that yeah. bridge and you know I think the city goes out there occasionally and they use the power hoses and wash it out cuz people are living under there and I mean and and it's pretty bad. And yeah. they, but they it needs to be pretty pretty clean but yeah. uh I went through came through there today and it's it's a hot mess especially on the south side of the bridge. Yeah. On the south east side of the bridge. Yeah, it's a hot yeah. mess. Now, the west side, the whole west side, they don't mess around over there on that side other than on the north side of the train track where, but then they torn down all those trees, but where they are now and they are there now, the people are mm -hmm. on the south west side. Yeah. Okay, okay. But that would help. Um, yes. As a, you know, uh, as a, not probably not a deterrent, but it would help clean the area up a little bit too, because that is a, a hot mess over there. As far so, as the underpass for um, the one going into Evans and Rosedale, that one is kind of being funded by the TIF with some of the remaining funds. We're kind of hitting the end of the TIF. Mm -hmm. The goal is to kind of create a process for that first bridge then to hopefully mm -hmm. extend it down and do the one under 287 too. Um, funds okay. haven't been identified yet for it, but we're talking about it with TPW department mm -hmm. there. Um, Kelly Porter is kind of in charge of that. He's doing kind of all the whole roadway construction and master plans and things like that. So it's on our radar 
We just haven't figured out where funds would come from um, and who would lead the process. So the nice, the thing that sometimes this, the funds are easier allocated when we know who's kind of leading that process and applying for them, you know, having Mike saying, hey, we'll run it. So just, just so you know, is those kinds of, that's kind of how some of those pieces work. Um, but I wanted to let you know that is on our radar. So, so is, is the, is the, um, is the underpass near Pine Street, that's between the transit company and the sounds Vickery. Yeah. yeah. Is that on the radar screen at all? I don't know. We'd have to chat with um, the best person. If you have any of these kinds of questions specifically is um, Kelly Porter. He's assistant director in the transportation and public works. So James, that might be worth reaching out to him and just saying, Hey, this is of interest. And then he'll put it on his radar. Um, okay. For, Cause I know he has planned, he's doing plans for East Lancaster, Rosedale. We're looking at Berry street next East Berry. These are all East Lancaster, East Berry street. Um, East Rosedale and ways to improve. Ms. Ms. Collins, it might be helpful too if you would raise it also. Yes, I, I have been. Okay. I have been right. too. So. so. And how do um, we get? You have Mr. Porter's contact information, phone number, or email? Yeah, I can. I can provide that. So. Okay. Okay. And he is the main one that will be kind of, oh, kind of looking over that particular area, 287 Rosedale and the bridge on Pine and yeah. the uh, other entryway and uh and when you're saying uh they may need somebody that will be leading that process what what exactly does that mean well so if it's sometimes so for example near south side with the tiff funds they're able to kind of spearhead that process work with tech dot kind of go you know they spend a lot of time or like a develop like sometimes you know the developer will lead and um that's where we know we can kind of you know, reimburse, burst money. So, um, you know, it'd be spearheading and saying, Hey, we're, we're willing to do this, having either, you know, a nonprofit or something like that, that, um, to assign that money to. So, um, a lot of that stuff gets kind of done at one time and the big master plans and then bond money. And, you know, so it's just, it kind of, it's, it's just, it's a finicky thing with um, transportation dollars pretty much because you have to be coordinating with TxDOT, so. Yeah, and I think, uh, what's his name? Mike Brennan was working on the the Evans, uh, the Rosedale, the underpaid. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Collins, you, you bring up another interesting um, topic, the bond, where are, how do we make sure that some of the streets that we have in the historic South Side are repaved and all of that, that some of them that really need it? Yeah, you know, I'm, I, I don't know actually the answer to that question. Um, if Robert comes on, let's ask him that question, but otherwise I will find out kind of, I'm, I'm guessing you're prob probably gonna be, um, I know we're gonna be having public meetings about the bond for community feedback. That's probably gonna be the best place to talk with folks. Um, I need to find out who's leading the bond process. Um, so I don't I don't have that information at this time, but. Okay, um, can you, once you find that out, can you email, I guess, Jerry, so that way she can get it to us that when they're gonna have the meetings for the, the bond mm -hmm. money, so that way we can Absolutely. make sure that, you know, we're in a loop as to, you know, what they'll be doing. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And I actually do wanna let you guys know about another fund that could, could be put, um, a potential for, you know, this group specifically. So the, um, our department is launching, um, it's called Main Street Pilot Program. So Main Street America is a national leader in revitalization. Um, and we'll be launching um, basically a program that different area groups, redevelopment groups, you know, small um, uh, economic development agencies, things like that can apply for. Um, what would happen is, you know, after the application process, um, whichever communities are selected, they would get um, $50,000 worth of training from this national organization on, you know, how to do, analyze your own market, how to create a transformation strategy, um, and then going through that process that each community that's selected or district is that's selected creates their own transformation strategy, they get funding to help support the organization um, in terms of making sure they have a full-time staff member that's pushing forward efforts. 
And then they get, once that transformation strategy is in place, we'll have program grant dollars set aside to help implement your strategy. So it's kind of an effort to help, um, you know, just like how Mike Brennan has the near South side organization, establishing someone who knows the district, what lives in the district, kind of breathes the district and knows, you know, everybody in, um, that's involved in kind of empowering, um, giving the tools to empower, to really know how to infect change and then um, the city come alongside as partners in that. So it's a pilot program we're trying out in two areas. Um, and that application will launch on April 19th. And if that's something that interests, I would just recommend this group keep their eyes out for that that piece. That'll be from our department. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah, please. Yes, most definitely we want to be a part of that. I mean, yeah, as soon as that comes out and to submit the uh the application, is there a fee from the participant or you just submit the application, get it approved, and then you take the class? Yeah, so it'll be, um, so it's a three-year program and you'll get to work with these national leaders for three years. Um, and there'll be program fees um, or program grants for up to three years. So it's kind of a pretty comprehensive program. It does not cost anything to apply. There are some, you know, some pretty like restrictions on terms of who can apply. Your area definitely qualifies we're going to look at things like, you know, creating, you have to kind of create or whoever is applying have either a 501c3, c4, c6 structure that can be created to apply yeah. for the program. Yeah. Um, and like I said, there's going to be organizational funding and then actual program grants. So you'll have some funding to help get the organization going. But we are going to look at, hey, you know, things we'll look at is like, how much support do you have? Do you have your council member on board? How many neighborhood organizations? We want to make sure that whoever applies is that like they're going to be able to collaborate with everyone to get things done. And then the other thing we'll look at is, hey, in terms of fundraising, because the idea is to have an entity be able to stand kind of on its own, be able to do some fundraising down the road to support itself. What kind of dollars are you able to bring to the table? We're not look, asking for a lot, but can you fundraise a couple thousand, you know, to say, hey, we're really committed to this and we want to do this in our community. So the application period will run from April 19th. Um, until June, I want to say 6th. Um, don't quote me on that end date, but it's that first week of June. Um, so have some time and then uh, there'll be a workshop where the leaders from um, the National Main Street Center will come out. That'll be May 10th and 11th. I'm going to add everyone on this group's emails to the announcement email. So that way you have all the details and know exactly when it launches. So, okay. um, and we can answer more questions at and, that time. And the, name of, and, and the name of the project again is, is what? It's going to be the city of Fort Worth's uh, Main Street program. Main Street, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And a really good, if you want to see kind of places around the country that have used this program to kind of revitalize their community, H Street in uh, Washington, D.C. is a really yeah. good model who's used That's, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Ms. Miller knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why I was trying. I couldn't remember the name, but I knew it was H Street. Okay. Yeah, okay. so um, Emancipation hey. Avenue in Houston has also has used some of this program. So um, similar. So, Ms. Williams, I suggest we kind of put this on your um, agenda for the exec committee. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Look here. I'm writing everything down on, on the piece of paper, and I'll go back and I'll listen to especially this part. I'm going to uh, put a website in the chat that I would recommend okay. just kind of looking at uh, actually two websites, the mainstreet.org um, websites. So you can look at examples of what's been done and then urbanmain.org, which is their urban kind of big city focus program. They're rebranding it. So it won't be called urban main anymore, but it has better examples of the kinds of things that this program is going to focus on. Okay. okay. Um, and one other thing. So Right in the on the edge of uh, historic South Side on Betsy and Victory Street, you have uh, uh, the railroad tracks there, but the railroad tracks are not the the grass and everything is not being really maintained. And I don't know if that falls with the railroad or is it does it fall with the city in order to keep it maintained? Because not only does the grass get extremely high. Uh, also sometimes the homeless is down there and, you know, you got wheelchairs and you got all kinds of stuff there. And then also 
it just doesn't the appearance doesn't look good um is there any way or who could we talk to about the railroad tracks that you know of or should we talk to the city or what yeah i'm not sure whose jurisdiction some of those pieces fall in but mm -hmm. one good thing to one thing that i kind of recommend to some of the organizations you know entities similar to yours is really utilizing the my fort worth app um, yes. to report these things and the more people you can get to report it the quicker it kind of things move up in the queue so you got potholes you got drainage issues you got homeless encampments unfortunately okay. you know sometimes things get moved and then they come back that's kind of how some of those things are but it's a good place to start is to start documenting it and it's really easy if you've ever used it um, just download it on your phone just take yeah. a picture yeah. of what you see mm -hmm. get it in the system and then they're they're from what I've heard so far, they're very good at least getting back to you when you they've taken care of the problem. So, um, yeah, they are. I use it every other day, probably. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that because yes, like I, I don't think people it. know this is out there, but it's a good way to get things up in yeah. the queue. <laughs> and this, yeah. like I tell people that you know, if they don't know how to use the, uh, my Fort Worth app, if they'll take the picture and let me know where it is send it to me i'll send it in because i already have the pictures so all i have to do is just go to the app and submit it okay okay yeah i use my app quite frequently uh, okay then that will work so i guess we'll wait to get that information from you um uh, other than that um that's pretty much it i i wish uh robert stearns could have made it on so we can get some information in regards to the cdil fund which i think is going to be pretty good for uh development anyway and um uh, i guess jared he'll just let us know what the update is on uh the juneteenth uh, museum uh i did speak with him briefly about it they still uh they're still moving forward um and I'm not for sure where are they at, where they are at right now, what stage they're in, but they are still moving forward. Um, and that's, I believe, that's about it uh, this go around. And then, like I said, next time we meet, we'll have a little bit more information on the uh, Glen Glenwood Park uh, situation as well. I can speak a little bit to the CDFI thing if that's of interest. I know you were yeah. running Mr. Stearns too, but if you'd like me to, I'm happy to. Yes, please. You can share exactly, yeah, whatever information you have. So CDFI Friendly Fort Worth, um, it's basically an initiative to attract more money from kind of outside banks and organizations from all across the country. CDFI stands for Community Development Finance Institutions. Basically, the idea is they give more favorable lending terms um, to kind of community oriented projects. So in, sometimes certain projects can't get financed by banks. Um, the, this is kind of a second option. Um, you know, banks tend to look at like kind of just your credit score and really zoom in on some of the things. Kind of like to think of CDFIs as financing institutions that look at your whole picture. So maybe you had something bad in the past, but hey, we've seen, you know, Maybe you're, I heard it explained really well this way. Maybe your, um, your whole house is, looks really great, but your teenage son's bedroom is a mess. And if they're only looking at your teenage son's bedroom and judging you on that, you're probably not going to get financed. Um, right. So basically this is an initiative for everything from small businesses to developers. They can kind of apply. And what CDFI friendly does is they take your project and they shop it out to all sorts of CDFI financing institutions to see, hey, who's interested in financing this project? It's not necessarily a guarantee, but um, those loan amounts are usually more favorable interest, um, you know, just better financing than sometimes what more um, patient capital in terms of having to pay things back. Um, they're, they're kind of there to help work with you on your project because they wanna see you succeed. Um, so it's kind of an effort to attract some more CDFIs into Fort Worth to get some, some better patient capital into specifically the east side um, is really our focus and some of these, some different neighborhoods around the city like that. Um, so the, it's, I hope that kind of explains it. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of a broad thing, but. So you know. Ms. Ms. Collins, I'm sorry, Ms. Mr. Chairman, you mind if I asked a, a question here? Yes, yes, go ahead. So, so does it, do you have to already be 
should there be already development going on in that area? Are you looking to re-stimulate or increase stimulation? Or can somebody have an idea and, and, and apply? Yeah, all kind of all of the above. What is best for is kind of someone who's got their project to that point where they're like, okay, I have the business plan. I know, you know, what I want to do. I've kind of done some analysis and, um, but I'm just missing this gap in financing or I can't get financed because I'm in an area that maybe a bank doesn't want to finance in. Okay. That's what it's kind of best for. Mm -hmm. Now I would say some of them, and this is where, again, these CDFIs, they, they'll be CDFI that specializes in you know, just underserved neighborhoods. There'll be a CDFI that only will fund women-owned businesses. There'll be a CDFI that funds only Native American projects. So there's kind of all these different ones. So you can't say mm -hmm. what each one will do, mm -hmm. but some do like to take even more basic projects than that, where it's like, I just have an idea. I kind of have a thing and they're going to help get you to that place where, all right, let's, this is a good idea or this is not a good idea. Let's okay. go for it. So okay. it's really all over the place. Okay. Yeah, but I would say if you really want financing, the more you can get it to that, you know, just show your gap in your analysis, that would be ideal. Okay, thank you. Yes. I wanna um, go back to the uh, uh, Main Street uh, pilot program real quick. And you mentioned that uh, we could apply, but we needed to have a, a 501c3. Now, would that be used for that individual or how would, and how would that 501 be set up and who does it need to be set up with? That's a great question. Um, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a 501 C3, it could be a C4 or a C6. So kind of like yeah. a chamber organization or whatnot. Basically mm -hmm. the city can't offer just grants straight to, we have to have an entity to work with. And the idea is to stand up a long-term organization within the district. Um, so if one's not there right now, that's okay. But we do need to have something like that set up. Um, we're working with, we're talking with SCORE and some, like Texas A&M Law to see if there's somebody you can help coach to get people to that place. I haven't been able to secure someone yet, <laughs> but I'm, I'm hopeful that we will be able to find someone. Um, but yeah, that'll kind of give an organization a long-term, you know, stability place to, you know, organize their finances. So it won't be one person necessarily with right. an organization. And we're going to be yeah. looking for hey, do you have a board or kind of a team yeah. of people to launch yeah. this? And the more, the better your team is, the better chance you have of getting it. So, yeah. you know, that doesn't have to be just people within your neighborhood. It could also be, hey, whatever, maybe Mike Brennan or somebody who has expertise that you think could help this program succeed even more in your district. Or, hey, we really want to focus on parks. So I'm going to bring in someone who does that from a nonprofit to help me get that done. Um, so creating your your team and then having the finances to be able to keep your team running, if that makes sense. Okay, yes, okay. So the that entity will apply. Okay. That, that's why I suggested, James, that we put it, you guys put it on your agenda for the um, uh, exec committee because that's, that's gonna be an issue. Yes, okay. Then. Yeah, that makes sense. I was just trying to get a clarification of that 501c because I know that. So just I'm just thinking, uh, I know the neighborhood association. Um, yeah, the neighborhood association is is, is a, a, a entity, I believe. But then you have the economic development part. So if the economic development part of the neighborhood association came up with a, a nonprofit 501c, yeah. we there can come up go. with a we can come up with a name for there the neighborhood the economic development and then apply for it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. A model we saw of that is Como. They started the Como Historic Preservation Committee, okay. which is kind of a CDC model, and they just were birthed out of their own neighborhood associations. So okay, okay. It's definitely okay. something we've seen. Okay, that's what I wanted to, I just wanted to clarify we could do it that way. Okay. All right, then. Well, I sure appreciate all that information, Ms. Collins. That was awesome. Um, well, other than that, I don't have anything else. Do anybody have anything else they would like to contribute or let us know? James, I just like to say, whenever you get together, uh, with the, uh, parks and recreation, just keep me in the loop. We're there to support you. Okay. Oh, most definitely. I sure will. I sure will. Okay. 
All right, then, guys. Same, uh, well, same, yes. same, same here with the Parks and Rec deal, by the way. Okay. All right, Matt. I got you. Okay. Okay. All right, then. Well, that's it. I hope everybody have a great weekend. Great meeting. Got a lot of good information. A lot of good information. Sure. Appreciate that, Miss Martha Collins. And uh, look forward to seeing everybody at the next meeting. And uh, once we get the update from uh, Jared, then I'll send that out. And then um, we can discuss everything else at our uh, uh, neighborhood association meeting. And right quick, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Wallace did call me earlier today. And I think, uh, what's his name? Uh, Robert Stearns will be at our community meeting on next month. Okay. Okay, that'll work. Okay. All right, then. All right, guys. Appreciate it, y'all. Have a nice night. Good night, everyone. All right. All right, bye-bye. Have a good one. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Collins. Thank you, Miss Jerry. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, Miss Collins. <laughs> great, great presentation, Miss Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Because I'm talking about money, right? <laughs> you know it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, All right. Bye, bye. Okay.